So, hello everyone. Um, tonight, I would like to talk to you about exhibitions, obviously, but um, a bit more about the end benefits uh, from beacons for the uh, users and for a brand. Uh, because we're going to talk about Air France, uh, which we have been working uh, for this, this full year, and obviously with estimates. In a few words, quite quickly, um, I'm coming from a digital agency uh, which is called Dan Paris, and uh, which is actually the uh, digital network created out of um, the TBWA agency group. Um, why did we do that? We did that because um, today the main struggle for a digital agency can be to cope with uh, the fact that innovation is always going on. There is always new, new, new processes, new new stuff to learn and to develop and just in order not to change the whole structure of your organization we thought it would be very interesting to partner with some other agencies so we created this network and we currently have 23 hubs which is 23 agencies over the world and what we call labs, uh, 16 labs which are hotspots where a specific skill or a specific process is developed uh, so Paris is the uh, second largest agency uh, after LA and as I was saying to you we are not all similar so we have different skills which are um, uh, developed all over the network for example we've been working with um, um, Sweden and, and Finland with the uh, Rovio studios and those countries because they're known for being uh, you know quite advanced concerning mobile games so we've been working with them on an unprepared version for, for McDonald's and we we can activate some spots uh, when, when, when it's necessary. Let's get to Air France. Uh, this year, Air France got transformed. I don't know if you heard about the changes, I don't know if you fly on, on Air France, um, but Air France has quite a, a heavy, heavy past about being uh, um, a luxury brand and being a, a prestige um, company. In the early 80s and early 90s, and even during the, the Concorde years, they had like uh, prestigious, you know, uh, services. They had their Dior uniforms for their crews. They had great gastronomy. Um, and the thing is, they were worried because the last 10 years, the past decade, had, had been quite hard for them, and um, they've been working to to, to cope with the uh, Middle East Airlines and the Asian Airlines, which are spending a lot of money into the service and the, uh, the product development. So they've been redesigning all the communication and all the, the, the way they were speaking to people. Um, they have been coming back to the, their first communications, very bold and very colorful. Air France, in France, is known for, for being um, one of the first you know, um, media advertisers. They, they were one of the first to, to do media campaigns and, and poster campaigns and street advertising way before you know, big media agencies and, and street advertisers came on the market. Uh, they always have been known for, for working with great photographers and great stylists. So they wanted to come back to that. And they changed the, the baseline, which was um, making the, 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 the sky uh, one of the greatest places on earth, to Francis in the air. So from now on, that's the baseline. With that communication, they introduced and they invested a lot of money into redesigning and rethinking every product they had, uh, from the seats to the pillows to everything you can see in a cabin, uh, and basically in a plane. All the products, and as well the, the, their services, which, is, which are the way they are welcoming visitors, the way they are um, asking travelers to come into the plane, the way they are addressing and talking to people. And the question was, how can we get the public to leave uh, the effort experience in preview. So to do that, we created a, a first ever international event for Airfronts um, in, in association sorry, uh, with Auditoire, which is the uh, company in charge of, of um, organizing events in the group. And we, we've been working on Shanghai, New York and Paris uh, in order to create that event, which are important cities for Airfronts because they've been one of the the first company to relay those points from Paris. The exhibition has been designed as a journey um, for all users and for all travelers. So you could come to the exhibition and discover following a path 
all the class from economy to business class to premier. Um, everything Air France had to offer. All the, the, the products um, exhibited as you know luxury and art and, and with some poetic aspect. And our digital challenge was how can we make this exhibition and um, uh, this event a really massive uh, experience for visitors. And that's where we came to partner with Estimot. Um, as we, we, knew, we knew what would be possible and what we could do with the GPS or geopositioning, but really wanted, we wanted something really precise and we wanted pinpoint accuracy in order to know precisely what people can be indoor and in which room they are in order to push some, some personal experience and, and a personal uh, um, exhibition. That's why we've been working, as I was saying, with iBeacon. Um, which was really perfect for the case as we were following a path and we created um, the Efference Companion app which is basically a mobile app for iOS and Android um, pushing you information and that, that was for you as a personal passport, as a personal guide during all the exhibition. Um, I'm just going to show you a short video um, which will be explaining that way better than me. Geopositioning has become such a part of our lives that we've got used to our smartphone knowing its way around better than we do. It's cool tech, but we want it to have fun. The objective, support Air France's brand positioning with an unforgettable visitor experience. The idea, use Apple's iBeacon technology to invent a new kind of interactivity. To make the Air France event super special, we hooked up with Apple's iBeacon revolutionary tech that can locate a smartphone with pinpoint accuracy. Inside the event, visitors receive exclusive content about Air France services straight to their smartphones from sensors positioned along the exhibition route. The experience morphs in sync with their movements. As they move from space to space, they can access special features and compete for air tickets. Thanks to augmented reality technology, children can color their own Air France jet, then watch it take off and fly over New York, Paris and Shanghai. Visitors can chat with Air France in real time. With the Air France Expo hashtag, they can share content, photos and more on social media. The result is an adventure like no other, taking brand events into a new dimension. For exhibitions, the future starts here. Well, as promised, talking a bit about the results, uh, I would like to show you a bit um, what was in for the visitors and what results we had. Um, as you, uh, as you, you've been seeing, um, we were able to push some specific content and some experience for, for visitors during the, the exhibition. For example, concerning gastronomy, we've been presenting the chefs and the new meals to people, but we had some additional content to push and some, some stuff very interesting in order to understand the work Air France has been doing. You may know that when you fly, you're losing up to 60% of the taste and the flavors of what you're eating or drinking. So the work has been consequent from Air France in order to make uh, the food and, and really tasty uh, in place. So that was the kind of content we, we were able to push. Um, as well, they had a specific attention to, to children, which could be uh, a bit lost in a plane, and sometimes you have to keep them occupied for a very long time. So they having specific attention to them, and we had some augmented reality experience to push some along the way, and it was really, really interesting. We had around 60% down, the download of the app uh, when looking to the, uh, the, the, the global visitors of the exhibition, um, and it was very interesting because we, we have been able to use the app as a way to make people wait uh, while queuing in the, in, in, before the exhibition and discover Air France history and, and, um, and um, all that stuff. By unlocking badges, we added a layer uh, of gamification on top of that in order to, to uh, incite people to really do all the experience and to discover everything Air France had to propose. And you could, by unlocking all the badges, uh, compete to win Air France tickets. You could as well uh, win badges by 
doing the experiences of taking photos of the exhibition. I will come to that a bit later. We noticed that everyone, at least, did the, the coloring experience and what we had to offer. We had um, approximately 1.8 times the, the coloring experience done, um, which is actually a very good, a very good figure um, compared to, to the downloads. So what value for the brand now? Um, what was very important for Xprint was, was promoting their exhibition. And by using our communication funnel, as we, we knew that people would be taking pictures and tweeting and, and uh, sending infos on, on the social network, we wanted them to use all our communication funnel in order to, to brand it from our friends and to promote the exhibition. And uh, we had over 3,060 uh, user-generated content from the application, which is a good number because we had over uh, 8,000 8, uh, visitors on the, uh, 8,000, sorry, downloads on, on the uh, exhibition. So this is pretty much a good ratio. And one last figure I would like to, to share with you from a business point of view is that by, by giving additional content and, and by giving a real experience to users, we've been able to record a 60%, uh, 70, sorry, conversion rate, which is um, a, a huge number compared to, to other operations and other projects we, we have been doing. Uh, because when asking for details as name, surname, uh, email and, and, and postal address, uh, people were not afraid to give them to us. So that's, that's for us the, the, the biggest challenge for a brand. Here we are, so if, we have any question, if you have any questions, <coughs> you can shut them now. Are we good? Let us know so we can give you the microphone. Yeah, so I All right. one. Like, um, so what's the plan now? Are you gonna, like, what, what's, what's gonna happen to this app? Are you gonna have like five more exhibitions when you're gonna use the underlying technology? Can you speak about that or is that like secret? That's kind of secret, but actually uh, it was a, like, a big success for them, not only on the, the, the digital aspect, but on the, the global aspect. So they're thinking about doing it again next year. So uh, we already know they want to put some maybe Google Glass in, in it, if uh, there's something that's keeping, you know, uh, being promoted. So we might have some Google Glass to push some content next year. So maybe we can be working on, on pushing some contextual yeah. content. Same to that. Yeah. In three more new cities, London, uh, Moscow, and, uh, and Brazil, I think. Fingers crossed for that. So uh, Nicholas is going to be here for a couple more hours, at least, we hope. And, uh, and time for the last question. Anybody has last question? Are you hoping to expand to other airlines? Actually, we'll see. Not yet, but why not? Why not? So that's something I because I'm um, um, popping up in, in a lot of airports. Uh, I personally know that um, the, the French airport are uh, really looking into IBK in order to push, you know, the contextual content on, on the user passports. That's something to develop, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Big applause for Nicolas.